Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beetle series. My never-ending quest to try to get the body put back on the chassis of this Beetle. Today I'm going to work on the suspension. So the Beetle, as I bought it, came with these KYB GR2 shocks um, all around. And I'm sure they were great shocks when they were new, but they are old and worn out. And so I figured um, I would go ahead and upgrade to the KYB gas adjust shocks. So these are um, just one step up from the basic model. They're supposed to give you a little bit more comfortable ride with an additional bit of handling. And um, I guess we'll find out. I don't know. I just remember when I test drove this Beetle before I took it apart. It was rough on the road. I felt every bump. I don't think these shocks that are currently installed have any life left in them at all. Um, I remember when I had the suspension taken apart originally that there was no resistance on the shocks when I would, you know, I'd push them in and pull them out and there was very little resistance. On the flip side, these shocks, um, you know, I can't, I can't move them by hand. I have to set them on the ground and put my full weight on them and I believe that's how they're supposed to be. So, <clears throat> first things first, I guess I'll work on the front. I'm going to take off the shocks, put put the new ones on. Uh, these, This one actually is a rear shock, so i got to dig out my front shocks, and then uh, we'll get to it. Okay, the front shock consists of a 17 millimeter bolt or nut down at the bottom and then two 14 millimeter nuts that are jammed together on the top and then for installation you're going to want to get an eight millimeter wrench on this stem here and hold it in place when you lock it down because they make it very clear that you do not want to spin this stem inside the shock. I guess you can cause damage that way. So let's get this pulled apart real quick. See, I shouldn't be able to do that by hand. It does return on its own slowly, but it's still. Oops, I need no buffers. I love this so much, I get to do it twice. Got the buffer in upside down. I like my job so much, I get to do it three times. Don't forget your washer. Then your buffer. Okay, there's the driver's side. 
Here's the passenger side. It's amazing how quick it goes when you don't have to do it three different times. Now we're going to move to the back. Okay, the back requires a 19 millimeter and a 17 millimeter. The head of the bolt is 17 and the nut is 19. If you don't have a 19, you can use three quarters. That's the reason why most socket sets don't come with 19 millimeter, if you didn't know. I didn't notice this last time I worked on this, but this is not a KYB in the back. These are Sensen brand. It looks like just something <clears throat> cheap you can get from Rock Auto. But as you can see, I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to compress this. And I can hear the, I don't know, I can just hear the oil and the air inside this one. And it doesn't extend all the way, and these things are just old, and they probably weren't that great a quality back when they were new. So old VWs would use the um, wavy washers, right? They that's their type of lock washers. They they uh, they're actually made out of spring steel, I believe, and they are bent. So when you compress them, it kind of puts pressure on the hardware and keeps it from coming apart. I found wavy washers online, but they're made out of stainless steel, and when you compress them, they lose their wave. So I don't think they're actually working the way. That they're intended and I can't find a good source of wavy washers or whatever you call them I, that's what I call them and I'm sure I'm not you know I don't know what the real name of them are when I look up spring washers or whatever you know I, they just bring up like split washers or other types of lock washers and um, that's not what I'm in the market for. I'm in the market for the genuine old style German wavy washers. If anybody has a lead on where I can find some, I'd be happy to replace all these stainless steel ones that I bought that don't seem to work. Okay, that's the rear. Just have the driver's side to do. I just got to do the passenger side and then it's on to the sway bar. Let's see if I can demonstrate how bad these old shocks were. Okay, so this is the shock fully extended. So if I press it in, first of all, there's absolutely no resistance at all. how slow it returns. And it doesn't return to its full length. Okay, time to move on to sway bar. This Beetle, I never had a sway bar for it, so I needed to buy one. So I bought the bar, it's right here. And I bought the kit to install it. It's a series of these bushings with some uh, mounting clamps. Now, if you remember, this Beetle has this janky homemade lowering setup on it. And I'm not sure if it's going to interfere with the position of the sway bar. I think the sway bar will clear. Because it, it kind of rides below everything here. But we're going to find out, I guess, once I uh, get going. Yeah, I'll start by uh, getting some lube on these because they're going to be tight put the big, the big one on first <coughs> oh 
Okay, so I've got my uh, bumpers on, or whatever you call them, the mounting rubbers, and this sway bar can go one of two ways. Okay, I think ideally you'd want it tucked up as close to the main beam as possible. I can't do that with this janky setup over here. So I'm going to flip it around and we will see if uh, it's even possible to mount it that way. I think it'll be okay. I don't know if it'll interfere with the body when I put the body on, but you know, this whole big mess here, the lowering kit doesn't do it, so I don't think this will either. I'm just going to use some zip ties to help me hold this in place while I'm working on it since I'm by myself. Okay. Just trying to get everything mocked up before I commit anything. Okay, I'm making an executive decision here as far as a sway bar is concerned. First of all, the sway bar mounting brackets it's apparent that they're going to need a little bit of finessing with a hammer in order to fit around the uh, torsion bar bracket down here. Second of all, I have confirmed that this homemade lowering kit is going to interfere with the sway bar. So I have to figure out what I want to do with that. The easy answer, well, the easy answer, hard to accomplish part would be to cut off these sleeves that allow this top portion of the beam to rotate and then weld the beam into place. I'm not sure how this beam, this section of the beam is supposed to be indexed in relation to the rest of the main beam. So I'm disinclined to do that. I can continue with the current path, which is to flip the sway bar upside down, which I think is a viable option. It clears this part then, but I don't know how that'll interface with the body. So long story short, I won't be able to fit this sway bar until I have the body set down on the chassis. So that'll wrap it up for this installment of the Beetle Build. Um, if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button. There is a notification bell too, where it'll notify you whenever I release a new video. Otherwise, I just appreciate the views, any of the likes, and any comments, any advice, anything that you'd like to share down in the comment section below. I appreciate it. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.